Here I'm going to calculate the Fourier transform of a second simple function, f of t, namely the one shown here. It's a sloping straight line between two endpoints, and then a zero beyond those endpoints. I've chosen the endpoints to be negative 1 and 1. It's not essential to have them equally spaced each side of the origin, but choosing the axes that way so that the origin is right in the middle of the straight line makes for a simpler and nicer form in terms of trig functions at the end of the calculation. Let's go straight to the Fourier transform. Here's the definition, and now we need to substitute in our f of t. Just as in our first example, the endpoints will be restricted to be between negative 1 and 1, because outside that realm the f of t is just 0, so the integral disappears. Between negative 1 and 1, though, f of t is now t, whereas in my first example it was the constant 1. So the integral boils down to this one. We can do this just in the usual way. It's a polynomial t times an exponential in t. That means we can use integration by parts. Once again, you don't have to be worried about the presence of the j there. j is just a constant like any other. We treat it the same way in the integration. Just to give you confidence, I'll actually work through the details of the integration by parts now. Here's the integration by parts formula, where the primed here means differentiate with respect to t. It's up to us to make the choice of u and v primed. As usual, I choose the u to be the thing that differentiates to make something simpler. That is, just the t. When we differentiate it, it'll give 1. So there are my two choices. u equals t and v primed equals the exponential. Once we've made those choices, the other two items needed, that's u primed and v, are forced on us. We need to calculate v. u primed, at least, is very easy. It's just 1. And there's v. It's the same exponential, but we have to divide it by the coefficient of t. That means we multiply it by minus 1 over j omega outside. Let's put all that together into the integration by parts formula. Here, first of all, is the u v part. Then we need to subtract the integral of v times u primed. But that new integral is now just a simple exponential with a constant next to it. So we can do it easily. Let's continue the calculation. Here's the next step. I'll talk you through what's happened. In the first term, I haven't done much, but there is a minus 1 over j in the first term. Minus 1 over j is the same as j on top, so I've written it that way, just to get rid of the minus sign. In the second term, there are two minuses that make a plus. There's a j omega underneath, but then we have to integrate the exponential, and that brings another minus j omega underneath. That leaves just the exponential and the integration limits to put on. Let's keep going. Here I've left the first term alone completely and simplified the second term. j times negative j is negative times minus 1, so that's plus 1. There's an omega squared underneath, and the exponential is still there. That's about as simple as it's going to get, so now we put in the limits. Here's the result of just the first term for the moment. Putting t equals 1, we get j over omega e to the minus j omega. Putting t equals negative 1 gives us minus e to the plus j omega. However, we have to subtract that because it's the bottom limit, so the minus turns back to a plus. That gives us the expression here. Let's look at the second term. That's not so hard. It looks like this. We can turn this into a combination of trig functions. Look at the brackets in red, the first term. e to the j omega plus e to the minus j omega. That's nothing other than twice the cos of omega. If you can't see that immediately, look at what I've done here. I've put in a 2 and a half. That means the term is unchanged. I've also changed the order of the exponentials, but since there's a plus between them, that doesn't matter. Now the combination 1 half times the thing in brackets, e to the j omega plus e to the minus j omega, is precisely the Euler result for cos of omega. 
So we get the result shown at the bottom. I'm going to do something similar with the second term, the green one. Only this time the order in the brackets is the wrong way round. We need to write it in the following way. So what have I done here? Well, I've swapped the order in the green brackets. So it's the e to the plus j omega first minus e to the minus j omega. Because I've swapped the order and there's a minus sign between them, that means I must put an extra minus out the front. I also now recognize that the difference of those two exponentials is ready to be turned into a sign. But the Euler definition of a sign has 1 over 2j as the coefficient of the exponentials. So I've put in 1 over 2j and then I've neutralized it by putting a 2j back on top. We can now write this expression as a sign. That's now finished, but we could tidy it up a little bit, since 2j is a factor, and also 1 over omega is a factor. We could write it in the following way. That concludes the calculation, so I'll stop here.